Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture. So, in this lecture we will see a perfectly secure Byzantine agreement protocol for any domain. Namely, we will see the well known uh, domain extension protocol for BA by Turpin and Cohn. So, even though I will be explaining this uh, domain extension protocol in the context of perfectly secure BA protocol, uh, we will see some variations uh, where this domain extension is applicable in other setting as well. Right. So, what exactly we mean by domain extension for Byzantine agreement and broadcast. So, we have seen uh, various Byzantine agreement protocols till now, namely we have seen three protocols. And if we focus on the protocols with n greater than 3 t, then we have actually seen two protocols, the EIG protocol and the phase king 2 protocol, where we assume that the input inputs of all the parties is a bit and they want to reach agreement on a bit. Okay. That is a very basic setting which we have considered. But what if in some application the inputs of the parties is not a single bit, rather each party has a large input say uh, an input of size 1000 bits or an input of size, size 1, 1 GB and so on. So, in general what if the inputs of the size is L bits, where L is some public parameter. So, you might be wondering where exactly we encounter such application, well plenty of applications even if we take secure multi party computation protocols which we will be seeing later. There we have scenarios where parties need to reach agreement on a very large messages, la large inputs where the inputs are no longer a single bit or if we consider blockchain application where we have multiple copies of the same database replicated across n locations and after every uh, after every few cycles say the state of the individual copies get updated and then we run a consensus protocol to reach agreement on an up to date version of the database. There also the database is not just a single bit, it is an enormously large database. right? So, there are plenty of settings where we encounter this scenario where the inputs of the parties is no longer a single bit, but rather from a large domain namely the set 0 1 uh, namely the set of all strings binary strings of length L bits. So, if we want to uh, achieve if you want to do Byzantine agreement in this setting one option will be that we use any existing bit B A protocol and run it for L times. Okay. So, for instance what I am saying here is let us say for instance L is equal to 2. That means the input of each party is a binary string consisting of 2 bits. So, V11, V12 like that the ith party's input is a binary string consisting of the bits B sub I1, B sub I2. The input of the nth party is B sub N1. V sub n 2 and like that the second party's input consists of 2 bits V 2 1 V 2 2. So, option 1 basically says that you run 2 instances of any of the existing B A protocols where the inputs are bit right. So, I call those existing BA protocols as bit BA protocol. So, EIG protocol is one potential bit BA protocol, the phase king 2 uh, BA protocol is a potential bit BA protocol. So, you run two instances of either the EIG protocol or the phase king protocol. In the first instance the inputs of the parties will be V11, V21, VI1, VN1 they run a protocol and come to a decision. And independently they will be running a second instance of the protocol where the in inputs will be V12, V22, Vn2 and Vi2. 
So, suppose B 1 is the decision of the first instance of the protocol and B 2 is the decision of the second instance of the protocol, the overall output of the parties will be now B 1 followed by B 2. And now you can verify that the validity termination, validity liveness and consistency properties are all satisfied. So, liveness is trivial because we are basically running L instances of the existing protocol. If the existing protocol has liveness, then the new protocol where we are basically running L parallel copies instances of uh, existing protocol will also terminate. If the existing bit BA protocol has validity, then this way of uh, running L instances also will satisfy the validity property. So, what does the validity property now mean? That if all the honest parties have the same binary string of length 2, then B 1 B 2 will be that binary string. This is because individually bit wise the validity condition will be satisfied and that will ensure that the output B 1 B 2 will be the common binary string which all the honest parties have at the beginning of the protocol and consistency is again boiling down to the consistency of the existing bit PA protocol. Namely, every honest party will output B 1 as the first bit and B 2 as the second bit and overall output will be B 1 B 2 for everyone. So, that is one way of doing domain extension, but what will be the complexity of this domain extension protocol? The complexity will be L times the complexity of the existing BA protocol. So, this notation BA within parenthesis denotes the complexity and when I say complexity I mean to say the communication complexity of existing bit be a protocol which you deploy here. Okay. So, for instance, if we are deploying the phase king protocol as the bit PA protocol, then this option will result in a communication complexity of order n cube L. Whereas, if we are using the EIG protocol, then this option number 1 will result in a com communication complexity of order n over n power t plus 1 times l. What domain extension does basically is that it allows you to get a Byzantine agreement protocol for a larger domain, but without running L instances of bit B A protocol, but rather we will run only a constant number of instances of existing bit B A protocol. Okay that ensures that we have tremendous saving in the communication complexity. So, in today's lecture we will discuss uh, domain extension due to Turpin and Cohn and this gives you a complexity of order n square times L plus whatever complexity is required by existing bit B A protocol. So, you see that we are now not running L instances of the bit B A protocol. So, you might be wondering how it is a saving. So, if say for instance I take L to be 1000, then option 1 means that I am running 1000 instances of the existing bit B A protocol, which is an overkill. Whereas, through Turpin Cone domain extension, we can still get a Byzantine agreement protocol where the number of instances of the Byzantine agreement protocol, the bit BA protocol that we need to execute is only one, which is a tremendous amount of saving. Later on, after developing sufficiently advanced tools in the course, we will see much more efficient domain extension protocol where the overall cost for the Byzantine agreement protocol for the bigger domain will be only n times L plus some constant number of invocations of the existing bit PA protocol. So, even the communication complexity which depends upon L in the turpin cone domain extension that gets improved in this 
more efficient domain extension, but to understand this more efficient domain extension we need to develop some more advanced tools which we will develop as the course proceeds. Okay. So, here is the Turpin cone domain extension with n greater than 3 t and here we assume that we have an already existing bit BA protocol which takes R number of rounds which is perfectly secure and whose communication complexity is denoted by this expression. So, you have many choices for this pi B. Okay, remember, you have many choices here for pi B A. You can either use the EIG protocol or you can use the phase king 2 protocol. And now we want to design a B A protocol where the inputs of the parties are binary strings of length L bits, where L is greater than equal to 1. And our goal is to get a Byzantine agreement protocol where this existing bit B A protocol is invoked only a constant number of times. In fact, in the Turpin cone domain extension it is invoked only once. So, here is the Turpin cone domain extension protocol. Uh, during the first round every party sends its L bit input to everyone. Okay. That is the first step. Now, every party checks the following if it has received a string v n minus t number of times that means that string v has been received from n minus t different parties then assign the string v to a variable y otherwise set y to a null value. Okay, because it is not necessary that n minus t parties send a value v depending it depends upon what exactly were the initial inputs of the parties. But if at all a party sees that a value v has been received from n minus t parties set y to that value that string otherwise set y to bot. Now, during second round every party sends their version of the variable y to everyone. So, the party p i its version of the variable y is y sub i it will send it to everyone either it will be a string of length l binary string of length l or the value bot. Of course, if p i is corrupt then it may send arbitrary values as y to different honest parties. So, for instance it can send bot to one set of honest parties, it can set value v 1 to one set of parties, value v 2 to another set of parties and so on. But if p i is honest it will stick to its version of y while sending it to different parties. Now, again depending upon how many copies of a particular value y p i receives it sets its vote variable. So, if p i receives a specific y value n minus t number of times that means from at least n minus t different parties then it sets its vote variable to 1 otherwise it sets its vote variable to 0. Again different parties may end up send setting different vote variables that means, they may assign different values to their respective vote variables depending upon whether they have received any specific value y n minus t number of times or not. Okay. Also, they set each party p i sets z to be the non bot value which is received the maximum number of times during round 2. Okay. So, remember when parties are exchanging y a candidate y could be bot as well. So, some parties might be sending y as bot, some parties might be sending y as an L bit string. So, z is set to be the non bot value if at all any party has sent any non bot value which has been received maximum number of times by p i. So, the version of z variable for p 1 is denoted by z 1, the version of the z variable for the ith party is denoted by z i and so on and it is easy to see that z each z variable will be either a string of length l bits if at all there is a maximum 
whereas if all the parties have communicated bought as the y value to p i, then p i's z i variable will be bought. Okay. Now, for the next r rounds, the parties are going to run an instance of existing B A protocol and what will be their in inputs. So, remember the existing B A protocol uh, demands that the inputs of the parties are bit not L bit strings. So, they run existing B A protocol where their inputs are their respective vote variable. So, that means during the first round and the during the second round parties just exchange L bit strings with some conditions and based on that they set their vote variable and then for the next R rounds they run an existing BA protocol to come to a conclusion. If the output of the BA is 1 and if the Z variable for PI is not bought that means it has indeed received uh, some non bought values from some parties and found the maximum then it set that value as its final output for the B A protocol. Otherwise, otherwise means either the B A gives the output 0 or the B A gives the output 1, but Z was set to bot by P I, then P I outputs a default L bit string as the output value. And default L bit string means you can imagine that a string of length L where all the bits are 0 and this will be publicly known. That means, if P i finds this condition to be true, then it will simply output a string consisting of L, L zeros. Otherwise, it will output the max value which, had, which it has set during this step. Right. So, now let us see whether this protocol satisfies the requirement of uh, B a. Okay. So, first thing that liveness is guaranteed. The number of rounds required in the protocol will be r plus 2 rounds. Why r plus 2 rounds? Because we have round number 1 where parties initially exchange their values and then they exchange uh, the y values and then the existing B A protocol which requires r number of rounds. So, liveness is guaranteed because after the time r plus 2 times delta every honest party will obtain an output. And what is the communication complexity? So, the communication complexity of the existing B A protocol is denoted by this expression and during round 1 every party needs to send its initial input which is a string of length L bits to everyone else. So, that will require a communication of order n square L. And again during round 2, uh, every party sends its version of the y variable to everyone else which also requires a communication of n square l bits. So, liveness is trivial to argue here. Let us argue the validity condition. So, we want to show here that if all the honest parties have the same L bit input say V, then they stick to that input as the final output. Okay. That means, they do not change their out in uh, that, that means, the input that means, the output remains the same as the string V itself. So, it is very easy to prove this. So, if all the honest parties have the same L bit st length string V, then every honest party will be sending that string v to everyone else during the round 1. Corrupt parties may send different versions of L bit strings, we do not care what they send. That means, at the end of round 1, every party would have set their y variable to the string v. Okay. So, again for demonstration I am taking here n is equal to 4 and t is equal to 1. So, everyone would have sent V to everyone except the corrupt party. The corrupt party can send any other string and due to that the Y variable for every party will be set to V. As a result of that when everyone sends the variable Y, 
their respective version of y to other parties they will see that there are n minus t copies of the string v which is received which are received and as a result of that every honest party will set their uh, variable z to that string v and on top of that every honest party will also set their vote variable to 1 because they have received a copy of y n minus t number of times. That means, every honest party will participate in the instance of the vote protocol with input 1 and due to the validity of the existing BA protocol it is guaranteed that every honest party will output 1 during the instance of the vote protocol. That means, this condition will not be satisfied this condition will be satisfied for every honest party and hence they will output the value v the string v that means the validity is satisfied. Now, we prove the consistency property and to prove the consistency property we will prove first a helping lemma which claims that if any honest party sends a value y which is not bought during the round 2. then no other honest party sends a different value for y okay namely no other honest party sends y prime during round 2 where y prime is different from y okay that's the claim so that means if at all during round 2 any other honest party sends a y okay they have to send a y it will be either bought or it will be the same y Okay. So, it cannot be the case that P i has sent a y during round 2 and P j sends a y prime where y prime and y are different that would not be the case. If at all P j sends here something it will be either the same y or the value bot. Okay. So, let us prove this and the proof for this will be very similar to uh, a proof of a similar lemma that we have used during the phase king 2 protocol. So, let P i be an honest party who sends a value y which is an L bit string v during round 2 and consider P j is another honest party and we want to prove that P j does not send any other L bit string as its y variable. If it sends any other if, if at all it sends any L bit string it will be y uh, it will be v sorry or it could be bought it cannot be any other y prime. So, since P i has set the string a variable y to the string v that means, it has received this L bit string v from at least n minus t parties call that set as a and among those n minus t parties at least n minus 2 to 2 t will be honest because there can be up to t corrupt parties in the set A. Right Now, how many strings of length L, how many copies of a string W which is where W is different from V will be received by this honest party P j. Well, it could be possible that there are t corrupt parties in the set A which might send a string w as their initial value to P j where w is different from v and it could be also possible that there are up to t honest parties outside the set A whose initial values uh, are different from the string v where initial values are w. So, that means, all in all the honest party P j would have received uh, at most 2 t copies of the string w where the string w is different from v and 2 t is strictly less than n minus t. That means, the condition for setting y to a non bought value will not be satisfied for P j. That means, if at all P j has set its y variable to an L bit string it will be the string v it cannot be any other string w. So, either P j sets its y j variable to w v or 
the bot, it cannot be anything else. So, that proves this lemma. Now, using this lemma, we will prove the consistency property that all honest parties output a common L bit string in this domain extension protocol. And again, let us see how the output decision is taken. If the output of the BA protocol is 0, then the consistency is trivial. If the output of BA is 0, then every honest party outputs the default string all zeros. They do not take any other string as the output. So, consistency is trivial. Consider the case when the output of BA is not 0, that means the output of BA is 1. Okay. If the output of BA is 1, that means at least one honest party, we do not know which exact honest party, but we know that at least one honest party is there say PI, who, parties, who must have participated in the instance of the bit BA protocol with its vote input being 1. Why so? This is because if all the honest parties would have participated in the existing bit BA protocol with vote being 0, then from the validity of pi BA, the output of the pi BA would have been 0. But we are considering the case when the output of the pi BA is 1, that is possible only if there is at least one input from the honest party, at least one honest party who is participating in this existing instance of the bit BA protocol with vote being 1. Now, from the consistency of the bit BA protocol, all honest parties also will obtain the output 1 in the BA protocol. So, this shows at least that the else statement is not getting executed by everyone. If at all everyone is outputting something, it is because the output of the BA is 1. Now, we are assuming that there is at least one honest party P i who has set its vote variable to 1. Let us see why it has set its vote variable to 1 during the protocol execution. It must have set its vote variable to 1 because it has received some y value n minus t number of times. Let that y value be v. That means, it has received n minus t copies of v during the round 2 from a set of parties in B and it would have set its z variable to that string v. Okay. That is why pi has output this string v during the domain extension protocol. We want to argue that every other honest party p j different from p i also will output z equal to v. Okay. Let us see why. So, among these parties in B, at least n minus 2t are guaranteed to be honest. Okay. That means, P j will receive at least n minus 2t copies of the string v as the y variable during the round 2 and n minus 2t is strictly greater than t. That also is important because we are under the condition that n is greater than 3 t. And we have also proved in the previous lemma that if any honest party have set their y variable to v, then every other honest party would have set their y variable to either bot or v not to any other different non-bot value. Okay. That means, the honest parties outside V, outside this set B, if, at, if when they are sending their y variable, they are the, the, those y variables will be from this set. They could be either V or bot, nothing else. Of course, the corrupt parties in the set B can send any string as their y variable to the parties in P j. That means, to the part to the party P i, they have sent the string v as their y variable, but to the party P j, they may send a string v prime as their y variable. But if, if we consider the honest parties in the set B, they will send 
the string v as their y variable and the honest part is outside the set b will either send v or bot as their y variable. So, now if we compare the number of uh, y variables the copies of number if we compare the number number of copies of y variable which are received by p j we will find that the maximum of them the majority of them which are non bot turns out to be v only and that means p j will set its z variable to v and anyhow the output of the pi b a protocol will be 1 for p j. So, that means p j also will be deciding its output value based on the same if condition and we have shown that the value z will be set to v only by p j and as a result of that p j will output the same string v which has been set as the output by p i and that shows the consistency property. Okay. So, that is a domain extension protocol that means now we know how to extend or how to design the BA protocols for any domain. The same domain extension you can do for uh, broadcast as well reliable broadcast. Okay. That means, if you have a broadcast protocol where sender's message is a bit and if we want to design a reliable broadcast protocol where sender's message is an L bit string then again we can follow this domain extension because we know that as long as n is greater than 2t any solution for Byzantine agreement implies a solution for broadcast and vice versa. Okay. So, we I am not giving you separately the domain extension protocol for the reliable broadcast it comes because of the equivalence between the reliable broadcast and the Byzantine agreement. Okay. And this domain extension also means that we can focus our attention only on the bit BA or bit broadcast we do not have to separately design protocols for a larger domain. If we have a protocol for the smallest possible domain where the inputs are bit then we can use this top in cone domain extension and we can design a BA protocol or a broadcast protocol for a bigger domain as well. And later on as I promise in the course we will see much more efficient domain extension. Thank you.